All right, everybody, we're gonna talk about gout and pseudogout here. Gout is super, super, super common. So expect to see this in the ER, especially at night, because it wakes people up. Um, pseudogout, a little bit less common, but you're definitely gonna wanna know how to manage these because they are common, they come up, they're acute complaints, and so they are very, very, very fair game for CCS. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the i button in the upper right hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated. And definitely feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking the box in the bottom right hand corner and you'll get notifications as I put more and more videos up. All right, so what is gout? It is an acute inflammatory joint disorder that's caused by crystals. Where do these crystals come from? Well, with gout, they come from urate, from uric acid. And from pseudogout, they tend to be some sort of calcium, usually calcium pyrophosphate. But they both come from joints, and so you'll commonly hear these referred to by a big name, the crystalline arthropathies, okay? Because they're caused by crystals and they affect the joints. So when you have crystal deposition in the joint, it elicits an inflammatory response that leads to an inflammatory arthritis, which of course is painful. And remember when I said the ED, about one in every 500 ED visits is due to gout, okay? So that's actually quite a lot. Doesn't sound like that many, but think of all the things you can come into the ED for and one in 500 is gout. It may be mistaken for cellulitis. Unfortunately, I don't have any pictures of that here, but because you get this warm, swollen joint, it can look like cellulitis. It can also look like septic arthritis. So those are two things in your differential you want to consider. All right, so regular old gout, what is it? It's urate crystal deposition in the joint, results in inflammation and pain. This tends to be monoarticular. It can, be, can affect more than one joint, but it tends to affect one joint at a time. And most commonly, it first occurs in the big toe. Next place I would look is the knee. But it can affect any joint, it can affect the fingers, uh, it just most commonly tends to be the big toe and the knee. Uh, there are a number of risk factors that are traditionally associated with gout. Being older, being male, being overweight, uh, a high red meat diet, you, drinking a lot of alcohol, being on diuretics, any of the diuretics, particularly hydrochlorothiazide, but... Uh, um, the uh, you know, furosemide can do it too, and then chemotherapy. Why chemotherapy? Tumor lysis syndrome. T cells are full of uric acid, so you break up all those cells, uh, you can get gout from that. Uh, symptoms, this is very, very, very painful. So excruciating monoarticular joint pain, it comes on so quickly that it may wake the patient up in the middle of the night if that's when it occurs. Look for overlying erythema, can cause it to be uh, confused with cellulitis, and visible swelling. There may be nodules uh, in the soft tissue, which we call TOFI. You want to look out for those. Best initial diagnostic test is an arthrocentesis with joint fluid analysis. Okay, and that'll help you differentiate this from a septic arthritis, which is very important. However, with septic arthritis, what would we expect to find? Fever, high white count, stuff like that. With gout, not so much. The most accurate test is a polarized microscopy of the synovial fluid. So you'll order both of these at the same time. What we would expect to see with gout is negatively birefringent needle-shaped crystals. Um, and that's uh, caused from the monosodium urate, and uh, that's what makes the crystals, and that is gout. So initial management, we need to treat the pain first. So on CCS, if you suspect gout, you're going to immediately be giving these patients an NSAID. Ibuprofen, indomethacin, doesn't matter, just give them an NSAID. We do not give opiates, we give NSAIDs, because the problem is inflammatory, right? This isn't visceral pain, so we want to give NSAIDs. And then for our workup, of course, the arthrocentesis is the best initial test, and you'll want to make sure that you're doing a polarized analysis as well, because we need to look for the crystals. Get an x-ray of the affected joint, as usual, that goes for any joint pain. If, it, if the joint hurts, get an x-ray. A BMP is useful as well, and a serum uric acid is optional for reasons we'll go into. This is what you would see on polarized microscopy. Negatively birefringent needle-shaped crystals. You should remember this from step one. 
So the arthrocentesis will give you an inflammatory picture, yellowish, cloudy in appearance with an elevated white, uh, white count, but it is not going to be as high as with septic. Uh, polarized microscopy, we just talked about that. X-ray of the affected joint uh, is going to be variable. You may see some soft tissue swelling. BMP will be variable. Uric acid is variable, but high levels do support a diagnosis. The problem is normal levels do not rule it out, okay? So remember, treat the pain first. If there has been more than one attack in the last year, or if there are TOFI present, you want to start urate lowering therapy. And according to the American College of Rheumatology, you may start it during a flare. Some sources say wait a few weeks, uh, but ACR as of 2020 says that you can start it during a flare. The first line for urate lowering therapy is allopurinol. However, in some patients, they can develop an allergic reaction. So for this reason, we do HLA testing in Asians and Blacks. Do not expect to see that on your exam. Um, you also want to follow these patients up every month with uric acid measurements. If for some reason they cannot tolerate allopurinol, let's say they're Asian or Black and they have that, I can't remember what HLA it was exactly, but um, if, if they cannot take allopurinol for whatever reason, then you'll do febuxostat. The problem with febuxostat is that it is not good for patients with underlying heart conditions. Um, so look out for that. Um, if they can't tolerate that, then you can go towards probenicid or piglotocase. But allopurinol is first line. Patients with multiple gout attacks should undergo a 24-hour uric acid collection, uh, but that is something that you would do uh, if this was a repeated problem. Uh, further management, you'll give them an NSAID as needed and then advise them of their risk factors if they're present. So if they're taking alcohol, advise them no alcohol. If they're overweight, advise weight loss. Nutritional counseling is good so they know what foods to avoid, what foods not to avoid. And then if there's more than one attack in the last year, um, you want to give l and uh, and monitor their uric acid level. Pseudogout is a deposition of calcium pyrophosphate crystals. can also be calcium oxalate or calcium hydroxyapatite, but they're all calcium. Uh, this tends to occur in older patients with pre-existing joint disease. So on a vignette, look for a patient with osteoarthritis that suddenly got worse in the last couple days. It's just gotten worse, and they can't think of any injury or anything. Also, some metabolic or electrolyte disorders can uh, precipitate this. So look for hyperparathyroidism, which is naturally going to increase your calcium levels. Hemochromatosis, we don't really know why, but it does raise your risk of pseudogout. Hypomagnesemia, because magnesium is a cofactor for some of the enzymes that degrade pyrophosphate. So not the calcium side, but the pyrophosphate. And remember, with any stone formation, uh, if one or the other is elevated, it raises your risk, right? So if calcium is elevated or if pyrophosphate is elevated, it raises your risk. So low magnesium does increase pyrophosphate. And then hypophosphatasia, which is a deficiency of alkaline phosphatase, it is extremely rare, only like five or 600 documented cases, but had to include it here for completion's sake. So the presentation is almost identical to gout, but it tends not to wake patients up because it's more slower in onset. The most commonly affected joint is the knee. However, other joints can be affected as well. The big toe is less common than in gout. Best initial diagnostic test here is a synovial fluid analysis, and the most accurate is polarized microscopy, same as gout. Work up here, pretty much the same thing, except if you're suspecting pseudogout, you'll want to include the BMP because of electrolyte contributions. This is what you would see in pseudogout, positively birefringent rhomboid-shaped crystals. Um, so this is what you would see on your initial workup, um, pretty much the same as gout. However, um, what you're going to see here is the positively birefringent rhomboids, and you may on x-ray see chondrocalcification. Further workup, you want to try to find the cause if you can. So get a serum calcium, serum PTH here. We're looking for hyper hyperparathyroidism. Serum alkaline phosphatase, serum magnesium, and iron studies. We're looking for hemochromatosis as a possibility. So remember, you would see a high serum iron, a high ferritin, and a low TIBC. Okay. 
All right, so like gout, best initial therapy is NSAIDs, or you can do intraarticular steroids. Um, that can be done as well. Of course, that would be of the large joint, so if it's a knee, for instance. This is a normal knee x-ray. I'm going to switch my pen. Oh, I can't. Okay, never mind. Uh, this is a normal knee x-ray. Notice the nice, uh, consistent, confluent joint space that you see here. This is chondrocalcinosis. So notice here you have these little, um, I don't know what you want to call them, little spurs um, that encroach into the joint space. So you can see it here too. And then um, you see the chondrocalcinosis right here. All right, and here's another one. And then this is a recap of everything we talked about.